This one here is an original 59 Les Paul, probably the most sought after solid body guitar in the world. Um, bought this from the original owner here in Wisconsin. Uh, we've got pictures of her playing in her band in like the mid to late 60s. Nice old lady that had it. We get calls about stuff all the time and a lot of them turn out to be just like, oh I've got this guitar, I've got that, and you get there and it turns out not to be what, what you thought it was, but this lady called me up and I said, sure, you've got a burst lady, you know, and so she's like, well, yeah, I said, what's the serial number? So I, she described it all to me, I was like, so we drove over there and took a look at it, and I mean, and right then and there I knew I wasn't going to leave that house without buying that guitar, and um, we paid more for this guitar than her farm was worth, and I mean, she was just astounded when we paid her, we paid her in cash, and her and her whole family were there. They, they had the, the money all rolled out on the table and they were all standing around with, you know, posing with it and everything like that. It was, it was a great time and, uh, you know, we, we keep a photo of the lady playing her guitar with the, with the guitar and she passed away recently, but her, her uh, kids still come and visit and come visit the guitar and everything like that and make sure it's all safe and tucked away for her and we'll keep it that way forever. I mean, we've had um, many, many people try to buy this from us. I mean, right now I've got a a guy from England currently offered me three hundred thousand dollars for this, and you know it's hard to, to not take or whatever. But yeah, it's it's just not for sale, and it's one I hope to have. Now I noticed that we got a little bit darker up here. That seems the burst has faded over the years. Why does that oh, happen? This guitar was super red when we bought it. I mean, the color was just vibrant. And uh, if you took off the pickguard or these pickup rings, it would still be really red underneath there. But the red pigment in the late fifties, early sixties. It faded and when Gibson found out that it was something they were using even in the uh, guitar cases they'd put a little card saying to the shop owners do not you know put this out in a store window where the sun will hit it it'll fade or whatever and this one is a factory second believe it or not which you know they did even way back then and Paul McCartney's is the same way and we have the theory that when they're scraping the binding they probably went a little too far so they sprayed a little extra color there mm -hmm. and for some reason that color didn't fade as much as the other color and um, it's it's probably a little darker, you know, like more of a brown that just didn't fade where the cherry did and when they did it originally you probably couldn't even see it but as the red faded out of the guitar this really became really became prominent and uh, Gibson used this guitar for um, for a pattern when they did the 50th anniversary of the 59 Les Paul they um, they bought it a, a, its own seat on an airplane. We took it down there and uh, they took it all apart and measured everything out to analyze the specs of it all. And uh, it was a very, very fun trip. Yeah, uh, they put me up in a nice hotel for like three days while they had the guitar and went over everything on it. And it was a great time. So did you take the guitar down? I took the guitar down. Yeah. So did you get any funny looks with the guitar setting? Oh, I sure did. Yeah, you know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, you know, what is that? You know, whatever. But yeah, I had it seat belted in and <laughs> next to me and everything like that. So. Yeah, it is a, I felt like B.B. King or something like that. He always <laughs> flew with his Lucille guitar that way, too. So, so again, uh, another, you know, if the building started on fire, this is one I'd, I'd definitely grab. So, and run out the door.